Um, yeah, so just a bit about my background. At school, I, I was a really keen water polo player. Um, I, I sort of grew up swimming and, and, and really took to water polo and, you know, played water polo and rugby throughout high school and, you know, didn't really even consider going into rugby after school. Um, it was only kind of towards the end. I remember my one of my first team coaches, Gareth Wright, um, actually told me about this institute. He's like, I think you should apply to go. So when I went to the computer, uh, kind of filled in this application, um, which I thought everyone was doing, but I don't think that was <laughs> yeah. anyway. With a lot of yeah. a lot of guys, that wasn't really the case. Um, so I filled in this form, and they got back to me maybe a couple of weeks later and said, "Actually, listen, uh, we can't have you. We, we don't have any space for you," kind of thing. So I was a bit. Um, you know, I was just like, okay, cool, that's not meant to be. And then about a week later, they phoned and said, listen, we've just got space. We can have you. So, you know, I eventually said, okay, cool, well, I'll give it a go. I kind of saw it as like a healthy gap year, if you will. Um, I was like, off to Stellenbosch. Um, you know, I said, let me give this thing a go. I, I remember getting there and um, having these ruthless sort of um, ideas of what I wanted to achieve at the Institute. You know, it was um, I didn't make Craven Week. Um, you know, I wasn't sort of scouted to go to the institute or to, to you know, to one day represent uh, rest Western Province. Um, I was kind of on the back foot from the beginning, which I kind of, I, I knew that. And I used that, you know, as, as a huge motivator for myself. You know, it was very much part of my identity at that stage, you know, kind of, you know, not having anything given to me. Um, being on the back foot, having to kind of fight for everything. And I set myself these ruthless goals of, uh, you know, I wanted to be the fittest person. I wanted to be, I wanted to have, you know, this amount, these stats. I wanted to weigh this, whatever the case may be. And um, the funny thing was is that I actually did all those things. Um, you know, yeah. I, I, I achieved my goals and, you know, the irony being at the end of it, um, I didn't really get anywhere. I wasn't selected and I was probably more unhappy than ever. Um, for me, that was a big lesson in terms of having my priorities sort of worked out. Um, the, fu the funny thing about my whole rugby journey is that the moment I kind of let go from all these sort of ruthless tasks and goals and ideas, the moment I gained a bit of perspective as to what I was doing, that was the moment where my um, my career kicked off. And that was, you know, after, after sort of putting the rugby to one side, going to UCT, uh, just playing rugby, uh, for them and you know just being part of a, a rugby family that kind of has changed me for the good in so many ways gave me such a fresh perspective on the game and um, it really changed the whole way I approached rugby what I thought of it how it affected me and um, I guess that led me to um, you know play some better rugby than before so um you know, along the way, my approach has changed uh, slightly from when I was 19 years old to what I am now. Um, but I definitely think the whole transition of priorities for me was 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 a huge uh, a key factor. Um, I, I kind of let go of the whole rugby dream for it to for to allow it to happen, if that made sense.